Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's CITI program webinar. Today's topic is AI in higher education, an overview, and it will be presented by Iris Palmer from New America. Iris Palmer is a member of the higher education team and also works closely with the Center on Education and Labor. She provides research and analysis on community colleges, adults enrolled in higher education, apprenticeship, and the ethical use of predictive analytics in higher education. Iris previously worked at the National Governors Association, HCM Strategists, and the U.S. Department of Education in all of the offices related to higher education. She received her Master's of Public Policy from George Mason University and her undergraduate degree in political science from Goucher College. So the learning objectives today, um, I will define predictive analytics, describe how colleges are using predictive analytics on their campuses, identify possible ethical and implementation challenges with predictive analytics, and identify the possible pitfalls in implementing predictive analytics and strategies for addressing these pitfalls. The way we define predictive analytics is basically using statistical models with current and historical data to forecast activity, behavior, and trends. When we think about the types of data that are used in these models in higher education, the sort of standard models use student information system data, including demographics, enrollment, registration, learning management system data, so what kind of performance are the students showing in their courses, what kind of interaction are they having with their courses online, and customer relationship management software, CRM um, software. Some predictive analytics data systems actually use additional data. Some of them use survey data, as we heard from Mount St. Mary's. Others use financial aid data, which can be a little complicated given the rules around that with the U.S. Department of Education. Some use location data like swipe cards or wireless internet connections. Others use data from early alert systems or case management systems. There's also the use of student membership in clubs or other organizations, the use of tutoring supports, attendance records, and adaptive learning platforms. All of this data can be fed into a predictive analytics software that can then help optimize the student experience. So we have five steps that we recommend. And the first is to have a vision and a plan. Really, it is so key to have the right person on your team planning for how these, these systems will be used on the ground. It's really a recurring theme in our guiding practices for a reason. The right team from data experts and IR to enrollment management to student affairs to faculty just goes a long way. You also, if you have a diverse team, you lower the chances of having harmful stereotypes creep into your communication with students and the way you use your data. Then you wanna consider three things from the output. The purpose, why you're wanting to implement predictive analytics and what is it you want to achieve the consequences, so what are some of the intended and unintended consequences, what could negative outcomes be, and then what does success look like, what does failure look like, and what do you want the results to look like immediately, the first year, second year, so have some guideposts for what success looks like. I invite our audience to review our content offerings regularly as we are continually adding new courses and webinars in various areas of research, ethics, compliance, and professional development throughout the year.